Hello again. Hi everyone. As we explained in our previous video, every charity is required to have a constitution, a legal document that works as a rule book for how it operates. The major change for Restore over the last few years is that we've grown from being one church meeting in one location to now being a number of congregations meeting in different locations. This means we've needed to update our constitution to reflect this. A subgroup of the Restore trustees have been working on this over the last three years in consultation with several external individuals and agencies. This constitution has now been approved by the trustees, so we're issuing it formally to everyone within Restore for their information and comment, with the aim of adopting it at the next Restore AGM on Wednesday the 18th of October at 8pm at Restore Woodford. On the email you will have hopefully seen a link to this new constitution, we'd encourage you to download and read it. You're a part of the church family. We want you to know, understand and feel confident in the legal structure of the church. When you read the new constitution, you will find that the main document contains an overview of the Restore vision and the Restore leadership structure. It also includes a definition for membership of Restore and detail on how members can participate within our decision-making process. The document contains much fuller information on the roles and responsibilities of each team within Restore and how they interact with one another. The proposed structure is designed to give appropriate representation in leadership and decision making to all within Restore and to provide a clear framework for transparency and accountability for our leaders. The constitution also contains a number of appendices which provide detail on the appointment process and accountability structure for the eldership team, the senior leader, the board of trustees, the congregation leadership teams and for the staff team. There are additional appendices outlining the theology, core beliefs and distinctives of Restore as a church, our understanding of the biblical qualifications for leadership and finally on our process for guarding against error and resolving conflict. We'd also encourage you to read these sections carefully and to provide any constructive feedback. Any constitution is designed to be a living document, by which we mean it's regularly reviewed by the eldership and trustees to ensure that it's updated to comply with UK charity law regulations and fit for purpose, in that it adequately meets the current needs and practices for the leadership and governance of Restore. Any amendments to the document must be proposed by a majority of the eldership and trustees at an AGM and approved by a consensus vote of not less than 70% of those voting. As I said earlier, we're voting to adopt the new constitution at the Restore AGM on Wednesday the 18th of October. Votes for this and for the appointment of new trustees will be invited at the start of October for a two-week period and will be registered online. The results of the vote will be announced at the AGM. Please look out for the email communication around this voting process. Because Restore is your church family, we want you to have a say over changes like this. So if, after reading the new constitution, you have questions or comments, or would appreciate a conversation with someone, then please email questions at restorecc.org.uk. Once more, that's questions at restorecc.org.uk. We truly want this constitution to be the best and most fit for purpose that it can be, and you can help us in this process. So click on the link, download, have a read, and let us know what you think. Enjoy!